Hello and welcome to another Dynamic CCTV technical video. Today we're going to be looking at the basic setup of a 7 Series AMPR camera. We've got it up on screen here, but first things first, before we get into the setup of the, um, the AMPR side of things, what I'd like to point you all at is the installation guide that's available on our website, www.dynamic-cctv.com. If you follow the 7 Series AMPR installation guide, it looks something similar to this. This will give you the angles you need to use in order to get the best possible uh, results from your AMPR setup. Without following this guide, it's going to be very hit and miss. If you follow this guide, it's to do with the tilting angle of the plates, the height of the, the actual AMPR camera itself. You should have absolutely no problems going forward. 99% uh, of the problems presented to us at Dynamic CCTV are due to the camera not achieving these very specific angles. Okay, so moving on. Here we have the basic setup, as you can see there, the more eagle eyes amongst you will see that the gate here isn't exactly square onto the screen, and there's quite a lot of driveway here. There's a reason for that. Again, it's down to those angles. Um, as we have cars moving in from the outside, coming down our gate, we are setting the scene to get the best possible angle for the plate, not the actual gate itself. So in our case, if we were to set it square onto the gate, we wouldn't really see, the, the plates wouldn't be angled correctly and we would be a little bit hit and miss. So what we've done is we've moved the tilt of the camera slightly down and to the left. We still see the gate, but we get a much better view of the plates. Assuming we've set all the network up and we've set all the, uh, the parameters correctly, now we're going to look at the configuration of the actual MPR side. So clicking on configuration and road traffic detection config. Okay, so what we've got is our very basic config screen here. We've got a choice at the top, vehicle detection and mixed traffic detection. This is new to the 7 Series camera. We're going to use it in vehicle detection mode only. Um, I, we don't really see a need for uh, using mixed traffic detection as ultimately you're buying an AMPR camera to be an AMPR camera. So for this uh, test we're going to be using it in this mode. First things first, we're going to enable and we're going to draw our box. So we've got our left and right lane um, border here and just move that around if we can tilt it so on so what I'm going to do is we're going to want cars to come in this entrance here swing down this road so we're going to pretty much cover the road like so take this move it to there bit of area click save you see now once we click save that's drawn the area there um, what you'll also see new on it was on the newer firmware on the older cameras and on on this firmware you'll see this blue line this is your detection line so as the plates come into this box wherever you've got this line sort of lined up that's where it's going to try and detect the plate so i'm going to leave that to about there which is roughly where the plates will be the straightest as it comes through the box click save once we've done that if we move on to the select mode um, we're going to use it in entrance and exit mode, which is mainly what we use these for. Um, you've also got a city street mode for faster moving cars down um, down the road, basically, and an alarm input for if you want to trigger it off an alarm input. So we're going to leave it on entrance and exit mode. Now there is um, the arming schedule and a linkage method, but first of all, we're going to look at the black and white list. So in the black and white list page, you've got a few options. But first things first, we're going to need to export the whitelist from the camera so we can edit it. So we we'll click on export, we we'll choose a place to export it to, which is now downloads, click save. So that's just save that down into our downloads, which is available here. We edit the file. As you can see now, it opens up in Excel. We've got a few options to put in here. One thing of note here is you've now got to put an expiry date in, in, in the Asian uh, date and time format. Um, that has to be in there you can't leave that blank so you must fill that in and also when putting plates in just make sure you don't put any repeat plates in because that will cause bother down the line so if in this instance we're just going to call plate test we're going to put that into the blacklist and we're going to give it a expiry date of 2999 12 and 12. we'll put another plate in just so it can go on the other list so we'll put this test white. Not that anyone would have a plate like that. But there we go. 2999 12 12. Okay, so there's two plates added. If we click save to that, just get that out of the way. So now we just want to import that, what we've done. So we browse to that file. So there we have it there. Select it and import. 
give it a second. So now we've imported that, you can see that your test is showing up on the blacklist. It's going to expire in this date. Um, and we've got test white on our whitelist that's running there. All well and good. So we've created a small black and white list and that can be edited at any time by following that same procedure. So now we've done that, if we go back to our detection config and in our arming schedule, we can see now we've got a few options. So in our options, we've got all, all the whitelist, the blacklist, and then other, which is anything that's not on either the white or the black. So first things first, if you wanted it to, for instance, a common thing would be to trigger a barrier if they're on a whitelist, for instance, what you would do is you would choose your whitelist, you would select either the forward or the reverse, so it's gonna detect whether the car's coming in or going out. So in this instance, we just want it for all. Um, we want it to trigger the alarm output on A1 on the camera. Um, so that'll basically trigger the A1 on the camera, which is set to a loop that will bring up the alarm, bring up the barrier. Okay, blacklist, we might want um, it to set off alarm two. This could be wired to a buzzer, and um, it's in case of, like say, in a garage forecourt, for instance, if anyone had um, effectively stolen some petrol and you've got the plates, if they come back into the forecourt, it will alarm you immediately if you had a buzzer set to that alarm out. So we can save that. Obviously, we've got the other list. We don't want it to trigger anything at all. We just want it to re uh, clock the plates. So if we click save to that. So that's it. We've got that on an arming schedule, standard arming schedule. That's just on continuously, as you can see on, on all of those whitelists, blacklists. So that's effectively it for the whitelist, blacklist. Um, if we go into the real-time plate results, you can enable that as cars come through. This is useful for testing the alignment of your, of your NPR camera, because as cars come through there, it will show you a brief clip of the plate. We'll go into that in a bit of detail later on. We'll show you, the next video coming along, we'll show how it's, it all works. So for now, that's that's basically the basic setup of it. Uh, very simple to do, providing you've got the, the camera mounted correctly, uh, it should be no problem at all. Okay, so next we'll look at the camera in action. Okay, so now we've looked at this major setup. Here's an example of it working. So if we click on the real-time LPR result at the top and then enable it, as you can see, it's already populated with some of the stuff that's been going on this morning. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna get a colleague now to come through, drive through the entrance, and we'll see it pick up the plate live. Now you'll notice on this side, you can see um, the direction. You've got forward and then you've also got reverse. If we go down to the back, they have got reverse plates. Um, so it knows the direction of which way the car is traveling. That's handy for if you've got multiple barriers and so on. Also, with the seven line camera, it requires it sees the vehicle as well. So it's not just looking for a plate, it's looking for a vehicle. Here he comes now, and we should see plate pop up. There we go, this plate's popped up there in the forward. So yeah, it requires to see the vehicle and the plate together. So if you've got just someone walking around with a plate in the hand, or if there's some writing on the side of a van, it's not gonna pick up that at all, uh, whereas it used to on the four line. So there we have it. There's the real-time plate results and a, and a basic setup on how to do that. So one of the other big issues we often get asked about is the nighttime performance of the MPR camera. So what we do here generally, if you click on image and once that loads up, if you go to exposure settings here, you'll see default, the exposure time is one over 25. If you're getting sort of good MPR during the day, but at night time, it's just there, uh, there's, there's like the IRs reflecting off the plate, so you've got headlights beaming in, affecting the image. What you can do is just up this. Now, depending on your scene and how much natural light there is or, or unnatural light there is, depends on how much you want to set this, or how high you want to set this. If we set it one over 1000 there, Basically what'll happen is the screen will darken slightly. Certainly at night time, the screen's gonna be much darker and it might only even get the plate and nothing else, but it will get the plate. It's always worth doing that. If you're not getting decent detection at night, have a play around with the settings, see what works best for you, um, but th that should usually get around that issue. If you've got any questions, contact us at dynamic-ccdv.com. We'll be happy to answer any of your questions.